Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, we have got some fantastic questions for you today. We're gonna to jump into them in just a minute, but you can help somebody start Kendo. You can help grow the Kendo population. You can help Kendo grow in the world. All you've gotta do is hit the little thumbs up thing, thumbs down if you you know feel like it. I don't care, YouTube treats it the same. Uh, <laughs> go to the little bell, ring the Kendo bell. That helps more people do Kendo. They hear the bell ringing and they come and start Kendo. Subscribe. All that sort of stuff. Write a comment down below. April Fools. Whatever you want. Because all that stuff helps YouTube show these videos to more people. And then they see it and go, oh, Kendo, that sounds good. I'll go and try that. And then you've helped somebody start Kendo. It happens more than you think. Okay, so do that. And most importantly, support the channel by shopping at kendostar.com. It's amazing, fantastic, brilliant Kendo equipment. Of course, I would say that. Of course, I would. So check out our reviews and all that we're like the best rated online we've got to be the biggest kendall company outside of japan now to be honest <laughs> the way things are so i'm sure there's loads of people in your dojo using us we're the best of it so shop at kendall star keeps the camera rolling keeps the lights on all that stuff as well so it's win-win okay let's get to the questions <laughs> okay Right, uh, this is a comment from the last video. Interesting to hear your thoughts on competitions for children. In my day job, I'm a youth football coach uh, and there's a huge problem in England with children falling out of football. Right, so you just said you're in England. So for those of you that aren't like in the UK, when he says football, he's saying soccer. <laughs> All right. Uh, as someone that lived in Japan for a long time, uh, I had to get accustomed to referring to it as soccer. So um, it doesn't mean like, rugby <laughs> with all the gear on it means like football where you kick the ball with your foot uh, <laughs> uh, because adults are taking it too uh, far too seriously and spoiling the fun uh, by screaming and making a match far bigger than it needs to be uh, as coaches were trained rightly to put the development of players above winning the match nobody will remember who won the match uh, won the under nines division three title uh, sorry under nine division three title in years to come but if you train a group of kids to play and love the sport that lasts much longer often i give a kid a challenge or put someone who wasn't a very good player in a certain position so that they had the chance to learn that would reduce our chances of winning but that wasn't the point it gave the child chance to improve areas where they were weaker in i don't know if she i would be the equivalent since uh they come along relatively rarely versus a match every week and so you probably wouldn't ask a young player to try something they weren't practiced very well in during a she uh but that but they certainly uh do it in keiko i'm going to correct your spelling here because it's a common one it's keiko it's not geiko geiko is when the word keiko is joined to another word like jigeiko or kakari geiko. Uh, it's just a, a sort of nuance of Japanese where the K gets softened to a G, um, but the word is keiko. Okay, um, <clears throat> right, so this is off what we were talking a little bit about last week. Um, there was a question about how the All Japan Judo Federation has removed one of its tournaments because of how um, sort of the competition is affecting the development of kids. And I, I made the point in that that it's not so much that it's their attitude towards playing the actual game um, because judo is, you know, judo was sort of developed in the first place um, to be a competitive sport. It was it was developed with the intention of getting it in the Olympic Games. Um unlike Kendall, so that's one thing that's, that varies very differently. But also the issue that they were having was that obviously judo has weight classes and stuff like that. I'm not going to go over it too much, but basically parents were like starving the kids or overfeeding the kids to get them in the right weight classes and all that sort of nonsense. That sort of stuff doesn't happen in Kendall. But look, I'm going to slightly sort of diverge a bit from what you're saying. I don't fully, it's not that I don't agree with you because I do, but there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a distinct difference. I don't really want to talk too much about uh, kids Kendall outside 
outside of Japan um, because it doesn't massively um, it doesn't massively interest me um, if I'm honest I shouldn't say that really I know but it doesn't because I was so involved in kids kendo in Japan and it's so different outside of Japan I, I can't quite kind of um, make ends meet on it it doesn't kind of add up well for me um, it's an issue I've got myself I guess but um, kendo in Japan for kids it's not it's it, it, it's not about them enjoying it or them having fun um, or anything like that or them uh, you know, coming away and thinking, oh, Kendall's really fun. I really like Kendall. Can't wait to go to Kendall. It, it's basically considered part of their education rather than their recreation. Um, and like kids, Kendall clubs um, is, essentially exist for the purpose of teaching the kids uh, Kendall as a, a, a personal development experience with a heavy emphasis on Shi'ai and parents like only metric of understanding it of, as well and the kids too to be honest the kids only real metric of understanding it is is uh, performance in Shi'ai so um, there is a massive heavier uh, emphasis on Shi'ai performance on kids Kendall uh, in Japan um, it's uh Mm. It's a difficult one, to be honest, uh, <laughs> uh, because I don't think it's wrong that it's like that either. There is a bit of an issue with um, parents that get a little bit overzealous, but that usually happens when um, the, those parents don't have um, a good enough understanding of uh, the relationship with the sensei. Um, the sensei should um, be in sort of have the situation where they're able to tell the parents to calm down and stop being like that. Um, but they do get like that, of course. Um, now, the other thing that I will sort of mention is that uh, <clears throat> in terms of no one will remember the under nines division three title in three years to come, uh, in years to come, in Kendall they do, all right? A kid's performance, it, it literally, like, Andor Shaw, who's the world champion right now, his elementary school matches are on YouTube, right? They're on YouTube. He was famous, like there's famous kids when they are that age in Japan, all right? Uh, when they're like, nines probably, you're probably right in terms of under nines, but like, I'd say like, like 11, 12 year olds, when they get sort of year five and six in Japanese school years, um, they're already kind of well known in the area. In fact, even a bit younger too. So I'd say even probably nine or ten. Um, so you know there is there is pressure on that, and it can determine the career. There's kids that can be super good, and by that age, it's like, well, if this kid really pushes it, really, you know, continues on the kendo uh, path, um, then they're going to have a good career out of it, and it that they don't have to enjoy it <laughs> they don't have to enjoy it in fairness on the flip side of that the kids that don't sort of naturally get some sort of enjoyment out of kendall don't tend to excel in it either um but that isn't you know i guess it, it it's almost like a numbers game where they'll get as many kids in there as they can and the ones that excel are the ones that enjoy it and the ones that don't enjoy it that much quit when they get the first opportunity that might be when they turn uh, to junior high school, it might be when they go to high school, it might be when they go to university. Um, so, yeah. Um, and the other thing as well, of course, um, in a Japanese Japanese uh, uh, kids, Kendo, there is a Shi'ai every week. There is a, shi a, a Shi'ai every week. Um, that's, that's, it's normal. Uh, they, you train uh, through the week and then weekends is Shi'ai. If there's not the official shi'ai usually there'll be a practice shi'ai but there's pretty much something every week um to be honest so it is it is a full-on structured thing obviously we don't have that in the west it's probably a bit harsh of me to be honest to say i'm not interested in 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 it doesn't interest me uh junior kendo in the west doesn't interest me it's probably a bit too harsh to say that because it's not true really especially i've got kids of my own that are involved in it now but it, I, I do find it difficult to separate the mindset um, from what I'm used to, from when I was teaching kids in Japan, um, to be honest, so it's it, I don't I don't like the idea of Kendall being um, something that kids do for fun. 
Controversial hot take number one. <laughs> uh, okay. My kids don't find Kendall fun. Uh, I think they'd quit if they could. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, hey, Andy, can you explain the use of Tenuchi in simple terms? Some teachers say that it is like squeezing out a rag. Others say you need to hand over your fingers at the moment of impact. Uh, others say it's like a lever, uh, a lever. Um, all right, so it's a bit difficult, but the, I think... The one thing is you have to squeeze quickly. I don't like the wringing out the rag thing. I don't think it's super accurate. Um, I like the, there's, there's two things. One, you have to squeeze the hands. And two, there's a concept called um, the hikite and oshite, which is oshite is where you push with the right hand and hikite is where you pull with the left hand to make this action at the end uh, with the wrists. Um, so it, it it's it's this... All right, if you, all right, here you go, okay? Simple terms, do this. <laughs> That's Tenuchi, okay? Um, it's like you need that sort of flexibility in your wrist and also that control. Um, imagine like if you were knocking on a door, you don't go do, 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 like that, do you? You kind of knock like that, right? It, it's the same sort of idea, pam, 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 this way, all right? Um, it's not something that I can just sit there and explain more, much more than that, you've got to go away and practice it, all right? So think about it in your suburi, think about it in your kihon practice uh, and your kirikaishi, and I'm sure it will improve. Next one, hello sensei, D just a query, does the tightness of the tsuru or nakayui, nakayui ever affect the longevity of the shinai? Is it more prone to wear and tear if tighten too much? So the uh, tsuru is the uh, string on the shinai, yeah, the string. Uh, nakayui is the this part this leather part in the middle, sometimes called the nakajime. Um, <clears throat> basically, um, mm, it probably, it shouldn't be too loose, all right? That will affect the longevity of your shinai. Um, I, I tighten them quite tight, to be honest, because they loosen over time. I mean, I'm not saying, like, get some sort of industrial vice or something to, like, uh, like properly overdo it. Um, you shouldn't be doing it so it bends or that the string snaps. Uh, but I, I generally pull it pretty much as tight as I can, um, pretty much, without overstraining and, like, pulling a muscle whilst I do it, you know, bursting a blood vessel or something. Just pull it really tight and then do it, um, I think is the best way. Um, I don't think there's too much wear and tear you'll get if it's over-tightened. I mean, it's not over-tightened, but if you tighten it too much, as it were, because um, it'll, soon, it'll soon slacken off, to be honest. Uh, next one. Uh, you often very helpfully quote from the AJKF Shogun Dan examination regulations. Uh, has anyone ever, uh, has anyone translated this into English? Um, I don't think it's the Shogun Dan re examination regulations. Um, is there in English already? Um, I think it's the, uh, the what's it, what, uh, that I usually do is the, the book, um, got it over there, I think, the, the first to fifth Dan, uh, example, exam questions. I think it's that one that you're probably talking about. Uh, no, it hasn't been uh, um, translated into English, unfortunately. Um, it's uh, it's a really useful book. It's great. Um, and it'd be great if it was uh, translated into English. I'd love it to be translated into English because I'd love for more gradings that are like conducted in English to use those questions. <laughs> There's sometimes like similar ones that have been translated from it used, but you know, sometimes there's like some real left field ones that are like really weird. Um, like there's, you know, I've, I've seen grading questions that you, you like can't get wrong. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to get into that. But uh, <laughs> um, what I would say is in terms of translating it. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to have a, an English translation of it. I'm not going to do it, though, unless there's any kind of ask me to, um, to be honest, because uh, <laughs> I don't want to put anyone's nose out of joint. Um, I don't want to upset anyone, um, and I don't really have time to sit and do it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe one day in the future, we'll see. All right, but it'd be great if they did. Uh, hi, Andy, thinking about the incident of Will Smith and Chris Rock at the Oscars, uh, what can you tell us about the importance of Hey Joshin in Kendall? So, Will Smith and Chris Rock, are they like Ken Doka and the Oscars is a dojo? Is that, what's that about? 
But I don't talk about real world, world stuff on this, all right? I, well, I mean, I talk about Kendall, that is real world, world stuff, but I only talk about Kendall. I don't talk about real world events because I know they're controversial and people have got different opinions. So I'm not going to mention anything about that specific incident that you're referring to. Um, but in terms of the importance of Hey Joshin and Kendall, of course, it's important. Hey Joshin means um, like, um, like always have the equal or even spirit so it means like an unwavering spirit so you're not super emotional like getting up or getting really down and of course it's super important in kendall um it's difficult it's a very difficult thing especially in um you know uh in lots of the situations that we face it's one of the things that we have to train ourselves in throughout kendall right uh one of the reasons we put ourselves under pressure uh, in situations like Shi'i or gradings um, or things like that uh, because we have to overcome our emotions um, and our uh, anxiety um, in order to still give our usual performance, uh, as it were. Um, of course, you mustn't... Um, Kendo isn't the place where you should show your emotions. Uh, it's not an emotional activity. Uh, it's budo. Um, it's about controlling, and su almost suppressing your emotions. It says that in the rule book, of course. Um, famous example, we always talk about doing the fist pump after doing Ikbon and you get the, um, the point taken away. Uh, it doesn't actually say doing a fist pump. Uh, it says, you know, over the top celebration. Uh, and that's, that's a good example, right? You're getting too emotional. All right, same, you can't, you shouldn't get angry. Uh, you shouldn't get like, uh celebratory um you shouldn't get um you know all that sort of thing um you should just try to keep your cool <laughs> as it were um that's obviously difficult um and it's it's hopefully would help us in our daily lives of course all of us are gonna experience times where we fail to do that um that's why we train Kendall, I guess, uh, to help us uh, keep control and keep a, a, a calm head in the right time. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Uh, hello, Andy Sensei. I have a question. Does Gedan no Kamai use uh, in Shi'ai and how effective is this Kamai in terms of intentionally letting your guard down to use Ojiwaza? Why is this Kamae not frequently used in Kendo compared to Hasso no Kamae and Chudan or Jodan no Kamae? Thank you. Okay, Hasso no Kamae is hardly ever used in Kendo either, um, in Shia, Shinai Kendo. Uh, and you've kind of answered your own question, <laughs> all right? You're saying, how effective is Gedan and why don't you see it in frequently used? I think there's some jo dots to join there. <laughs> Because it's not very effective, all right. Um, if you do get on trying to look like you're intentionally trying to let your guard, like trying to look like you've let your guard down, so you can do Ojiwaza, it's really obvious. <laughs> Let's put it that way, okay. Someone stands there and drops the get on. It's like, yeah, okay, you're trying to do Kaishi do, aren't you? You know, it's pretty obvious. Um, it's not a great technique. Uh, not technique, can't come at it, to be honest. Chudan's the best come at it. It's the best one. Sorry. <laughs> Controversial take number two. Um, so, yeah. Spawn out in the data. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, hi Andy, with seminars picking up in the UK and upcoming EKC in Germany, what are your favourite seminars, competitions to attend UK and internationally? Also, do you believe we were to increase the seminar and Taikai frequencies in the West, whether we would attract more potential Kendoka? Many thanks, have a great weekend. So, um, I think that's a great question. Um, I think that's, that, that is a good question. Um, my favourite seminars uh, in the UK... Um, all of them, especially the ones that I'm at. Um, <laughs> um, the, we, we've used to do a, a inter international summer seminar before the whole, uh, thing happened. Um, 
And I think we're going to pick that up again where we get some like eighth Dan Senseis over from Japan. That's really awesome ken uh, kendo seminar. Um, definitely worth going to. I'm usually there as a translator. Um, the, I've also been to a really brilliant the, the um, seminar I went to in uh, Yubon in, in France um was um the day before the days leading up to my, my my grading exam that was a really fantastic seminar there's some awesome ones there um one of my favorite competitions um in the world uh is the alessandria trophy in italy um love that love that tournament i've uh, been there a couple of times uh absolutely love it um and uh, in terms of if we're really talking internationally, um, I don't know about that many over in the States yet. I've not had that much chance to go over there. Um, I went and participated in the Mori High once in, uh, in California. That was, that was good. I really liked that Shi'ai. Um, and uh, seminars-wise, I'm not really sure. I didn't really attend any. Um, in Japan, though, <laughs> obviously, there's, like, the old Japans and stuff that are good to watch. There's loads of cool Shiai to go and watch. The best kendo event to go and watch, though, in Japan is the Kyoto Taikai, the All Japan uh, all Japan Kendo Ember Taikai. It's usually in May. You wouldn't be able to go and watch it this year as they're not allowing, allowing spectators. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. It's, like, Ember means, like, demonstration. <laughs> like, so I'm not sure, like it's like supposed to be a demonstration to the public but this time the public's not allowed to go and watch so not really sure what the the sort of concept is but i i get it they've not had one in two years so you know it's as much for the participants as the audience i guess um so yeah um and that's definitely that if we were to increase seminar and taikai frequencies in the west would it attract more potential kendoka i don't know i don't know to be honest, I don't think that is a route where people come to kendo from. I don't think there's many walk-ins. You know, it's not like kendo's a televised sport or that these tournaments or events are publicised in the public domain. Um, it's just in the sort of kendo community. Um, so I don't imagine it would massively have a, an effect on uh, the uptake of kendo. I think there's other initiatives that we could do. Um, unless it was like a, a an introduction to kendo seminar, that would be kind of cool, right? Um, and you, you did advertise it or push it in the, 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 uh, the public domain. That could be cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure that, um, increasing Taikai would do it. Uh, hi Andy, just wondering on how you'd structure self-practice when you don't have anyone to practice with. Trying to figure out how to use my time more efficiently in between days when I'm not in the dojo with others. I find it hard to get that same level of practice on my own, but I still want to be able to push myself and grow. I do have an empty wooden sport floor space to work with. Thanks. Uh, go and watch my Siberia Long and Siberia Long 2. I did them during the uh, the situation we had last year. I don't like to call it by its name. It's like Voldemort, right? If I say it, then like YouTube tanks the video. So um, I don't want to talk about what it is, but you know the thing. <laughs> the stuff just doing kendo like mostly for the last couple of years um so uh go and watch those and follow those exactly and you'll improve all right if i had those when i was starting kendo i'd have been well happy um so i really think that the, the, they'll be useful for you all right um so go go and use those just follow along with them um follow along you put you put the youtube video on Stand in front of your telly or whatever it is you've got your YouTube playing on and follow the instructions in the video. All right. You'll do well. Hello. My question is about etiquette. I had a recent knee. I've had a recent knee and I am currently unable to kneel down. I think you mean knee injury. Okay. Uh, I'll put much weight on my knee past 40 degrees. So what would be the proper etiquette for lining up at the beginning and end of class uh, for when I need to do song cure uh, and how to put on the burger without being disrupted? disrespectful thank you for your help all right well there's a couple of things you can do first off i just talk to your teacher talk to your sensei and see look what's what's the best way for me to do it should i do it standing up uh, you can do song you can do without song you can just lower the shinai down to the sort of same level as your partner without actually you know and sort of incline a little bit isn't in a kind of bow without actually doing the song uh about sitting down and stuff i mean you know if it's if it's really impossible then um you know you could p potentially do it standing up um or sat on a chair, 
um, if, if that's something that's suitable. Have a word with your teacher. I'm sure there's something that, they, you know, but it's, it's not an uncommon thing, uh, particularly. Um, it's, it's definitely worth um, talking to uh, your teacher about and see if you can get to a, get to a solution. I'm sure they'll know. Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. I'm a Q grade after practicing GA course several times. Uh, at seminars and in my dojo I've noticed that other people with Q grades tend to shorten the distance and attack from uncom un uncomfortably close by for me. Uh, if my observations are correct, people with higher grades attack from further away and there's less of a break between closing the distance and the attack actually happening. How to deal with people who push forward sort of mindlessly, although I have no idea whether it really is mindless. Uh, I also have the tendency to be uh, match Ken style, so maybe it plays a role in the short distances being uncomfortable for me. So the second question is how to deal with being a match Ken. Uh, regarding the earlier question about self structuring, uh, about structuring self practice, uh, what do you, what to do and focus on in a situation when you have to travel uh, and unable to take a shinai with you? All right, so um, I think the. Yeah, I mean, what you're talking about here is when you're with other Q grades, you know, they're getting really close and then then, then attacking you and you, you, it's a little bit too close for what you prefer. Um, it's It, it, it depends, really. Um, try try to attack before before they get to that closer distance. That's what I would say, to be honest. Uh, try to just be more positive and try to, you know, yeah, make sure that you start from here, yeah, and then when they start to get in, as soon as they get to your distance, then attack, make sure you're ready and come here. All right, um, but this will help both what you're talking about and this issue of being a machiken. Machiken means a uh, waiting. All right, so you're waiting and then you're going to react with the ojiwaza. You shouldn't. Don't worry about ojiwaza uh, until you're like third dan, to be honest. Uh, some people say fifth dan, but um, I'm not saying don't ever do it or practice it. But like, it, it shouldn't be the priority in your keiko. So try to um, try to uh, work. You know, um, from the Far, further distance and then as soon as they if they they're closing in just attack first yeah uh, it sounds simple i know but um just give it a try i definitely think it'll be worth it uh, and about self-practice if you have to travel and you don't have you can't take a shinai with you um either um if you can't even take a, a short shinai like one like this like we sell <laughs> uh, which is fine uh, if you can't even take take something like that that's fine you don't have to use the shinai um you can practice your footwork or you can just imagine you're holding the shinai and still do suburi all right you can still do it just focus on kikentai no ichi so moving your body and your footwork and your uh swing at the same time if you're not actually holding you can still practice all right and um, definitely you can still do that uh, and also Mitori Geiko, that's where you like watch practice. So watch YouTube, watch the matches on, um, you know, uh, YouTube. Try and figure out what the kendo you want to do should look like. Okay, next one. Hello, Andy. Uh, I'm uh, to start. I'd like to thank you very much for the input you gave me and my friend on the kendo advice video we submitted a few weeks ago. No problem. When reviewing it myself, I saw a lot of the same mistakes you pointed out in myself beforehand, but I felt it was important to send it anyway, despite my shortcomings, as to get the appropriate constructive feedback. I've already seen a large improvement in my ability to move and strike effectively and keep my hips properly aligned with my opponent. Uh, as for this week's question, both my friend and I are preparing to travel for Shinsa in May, uh, but we have to fly in, to another state in order to participate to participate. Do you have any recommendations for traveling with Borgo, Shinai, etc. to ensure your equipment doesn't get damaged during loading uh, and baggage claim? So, yeah, um, what I usually do is I use a large suitcase. Um, you can usually fit your Borgo in there, pad it out with your clothes and stuff like that. Um, it should be fine. Um, you'll probably find you'll have to pay extra for your, your Shinai. Uh, but if you're going with your friend, uh, you could maybe put them in the same Shinai bag. Uh, and check that in. Usually it's fine, to be honest, if you put it in a, a, a decent, um, I usually use a hard shell uh, suitcase if I can, um, a, a one that's big enough to fit the Borgo in. Um, and then with a Shinai bag, if you use like one of those zip up one with the strap rather than a traditional one with the strings, strings might get caught on the, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, kite then, conveyor belt, yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, you'd be better off with that. Uh, and then, yeah, like I say, you probably have to pay 
pay extra lot of airlines, charge you extra for checking in the Chennai. But if you want to use your own Chennai, then that's the best way to do it. Uh, unless you know somebody over there that you can post them over to um, before you go. Uh, and it should be fine. Um, the Borg is reasonably sturdy, to be fair. Don't forget, it's there to protect you from getting hit with a stick. So, it's not a stick, it's a Shinai, I know, but, you know. It's there to protect you from strikes from the Shinai. Um, so, uh, it, it's reasonably uh, durable. Um, it's not particularly fragile. Um, so, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Like I say, if you put it in like a hard shell case or something. Uh, and good luck in the grading. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, hi Andy, two questions. In Kihon and normal Keiko, should Nito players change to Chudan when they are in Motodachi role or stay in Nito uh, Kamae and provide a chance to practice against such Kamae? Uh, same for Jordan players. Uh, how do you handle Keiko when there is a significant age difference between uh, amongst practitioners? I like to do and have some good and demanding Keiko, including proper Kirikaishi, Oikomi and so on. But I feel it's a bit too tough for the older chaps. Uh, on the same time, I don't like to pace everything too much down for the younger folks. Uh, so it's not getting too easy or boring. Cheers. Okay, so first question. So when you do, what you're talking about is someone does Jordan or Nito, and you're doing the Kihon, and they're receiving, so not when they're attacking, when they're doing the Motodachi, should they stay in Nito so that the other person can practice against Nito, or should they move to Chudan? The general basic... Uh, rule of thumb should be that they go to Chudan, right? Um, unless, unless, you know, they already have, you know, have a sort of, they already know the person they're going to practice with and already know that that person's at the point where they can practice against the Nito um, or would like to try against the Nito. Um, but the, the general sort of rule of thumb would be to just revert to... Um, Chudan so that you're not really spoiling the cake off for the other person um, unless they sort of would prefer you to do otherwise I'm sure they would you know uh, you could ask them you could say uh, would you like me to do Chudan or Nito um, when I'm receiving you could do that too um, obviously if they're like a beginner or a Q grade probably best just to stick in Chudan though uh, and obviously a junior as well don't forget that um, Jordan isn't allowed uh if if uh for is it um jun yeah junior in japan it's like junior high school and younger um it's allowed in high school and nito is not allowed uh for juniors at all it's only allowed for adults so um it's worth bearing that in mind uh in terms of how do you handle keiko when there's an age gap amongst practitioners um it's very difficult i'm still working this out myself as well um since sort of setting up my own dojo a few years ago, uh, it is something that I still kind of try and juggle. Um, it's quite hard um, because, yeah, uh, sometimes you want to do stuff like oikomi um, or uh, maybe extended uchikomi, something like that. Uh, and it's a bit difficult. It depends really on the overall level that you've got, um, to be honest. Uh, one thing you can do is... Uh, talk uh with those older people and just assure uh, you know uh ensure that they are aware uh that um they, they have to work within their own limits and if, if things are getting a little bit too much for them that they there's no problem for them to sort of step to one side and uh and have a bit of a break or or, or step out um because you can't like you say if you've got younger people as well you can't just run at the sort of basic pace either i think there's a sort of happy medium in between somewhere and then hopefully there's a if you if you can find a way to get extra time to work with the younger people if they want to you have to also figure out what they want to do as well if you've got younger people maybe in their sort of 20s and 30s that want to be more maybe competitive or want to improve faster and um, then yeah they might need a little bit of extra uh pushing which you wouldn't be able to do with someone that was in their sort of 50s or 60s, for example, um, without sort of obvious, obvious risks. Um, so it, it, it's another thing you need to kind of figure out what's going to work best in your individual dojo as well. But for the, for the, for the time being, I think, there is a, I think there is a medium 
Um, and and what I what I tend to do is just let my members know that look, you know, this is, you know, if if it's getting too much, then you have to be self aware, um, and have to um sort of self regulate really, um, and 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 step out if it's if it's too far. Um, it doesn't it doesn't mean that they're sort of weak or anything like that or can't keep up or something like that. Um, it just means that you know it's 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 natural that everyone has different you know that's why there aren't that's why there aren't people in their sort of 80s competing in the olympics right is it because we've got different thresholds i'm not as i don't have the uh, ability to train as hard as i did when i was in my 20s you know at, at the age i'm at now for example um so it, it, it there's no shame in that either uh, but in order to sort of deliver the right experience for everyone there has to be that sort of balance right so it's difficult uh, i'm not gonna lie okay last one uh general question but and you can use for kendall rand how do you remove stains on the buck door it's the sort of stain when uh, one gets on an unpainted buck door from contact with a painted one is there a way to do so without damaging the wood um so it's a bit tough because yeah some people use those like cheap painted buck door um i hate those things um, that, that leave marks all over yours. Um, you can, yeah, I mean, I, I've seen comments on this already. People sort of saying, oh, you can sand it, which you can. You can use like a fine sandpaper to do it. It won't damage the buckle too much, to be honest. Um, you could, you know, give it, but don't just sand the area. You're best sanding the whole thing uh, and then giving it a, a sort of coat of oil, let it fully dry before you use it again. Um, that's one thing you can do. Um, you, you might not need to sand it you might be able to use soap and water you know and a bit of elbow grease uh might do it um that might that might do it but if it doesn't yeah i think you might have to use something that's a little bit more abrasive yeah um it's, but you know it's it's not gonna it, 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 it it's it's taking away like micrometers <laughs> of the surface area so you're not going to damage the bucket over from doing it or weaken it so you know don't go mad don't get like a power belt sander or something like, like this over it yeah i'm talking about like you know like a, a sort of i'd use a reasonably fine one and maybe get two grades as well like get a, a a slightly coarser one to get rid of the marks and then use a finer one so you still keep the smooth feel um that's probably what i'd do to be honest uh that's it thank you for joining me today um some great questions. Don't forget to shop at Kendo Star and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.